What's up YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another video. Before I begin, one housekeeping note for the channel. Tomorrow, Friday, October 15th, I've got a live stream. That's right, I got a live stream at 1 p.m. Eastern Time or 6 p.m. UK Time. You might have already seen the announcement in my community tab uh, on my YouTube channel. I've got an epic legend of YouTube coming on the channel, and that's Jules Burt of Jules Burt Collections and Unboxings. Jules and I have done a couple of videos on his channel where we look at the prices for some of his extremely awesome mint on card Star Wars items. He had some comics we wanted to take a look at, things like that. And uh, the videos were very well received by the community. So Jules has been wanting to come on my channel and I've been wanting him on my channel. I've just been either out of town with family stuff or you know we got sick in our family. So it was just a, a long time making this video happen. So I apologize to Jules for taking so long to get him on here, but we're gonna have him on for about an hour tomorrow. Again, starting at 1 p.m. tomorrow, Friday, October 15th at 1 p.m. Eastern. And we'll go about an hour and uh, we encourage viewer participation. I wanted to kind of share with my subscriber base Jules's background. He's got an incredible career uh, spanning everything from book publishing to acting to collecting. And he's got amazing collections of vintage rare books, Star Wars items, obviously, Simpsons, the Futurama. I mean, he's got everything. So uh, video games, he's just got an unbelievable collection that spans the gamut. And uh, we're going to talk more about that and how he got on YouTube. His channel is massive and uh, very well followed and, and rightly so because he puts out amazing content. So I, I hope to see you all there. Now we've got a big bombshell announcement that just came out yesterday while I was out doing some family stuff. So I'm just now getting around to it. And we've talked more and more lately about the consolidation within the graded collectibles industry. We saw that CGC uh, got purchased by Blackstone on Wall Street, uh, the graded comics industry. Uh, and now it looks like finally AFA has decided to, to forego the independent route. They were purchased yesterday. The announcement just came out that Diamond Comic Distributors is purchasing CGA, Collectibles Grading Authority, which is the parent company of AFA, VGA, DCA. All of those different subgroups under the CGA umbrella have now been acquired by Diamond Comics Distributors. And I'm going to talk to you now about why I think the acquisition happened, what the implications are for not only graded action figures, but everything else out there. Uh, why specifically Diamond decided to do it now, because I think that there's some reasons for that. Uh, so let's go ahead and dig right in. Here's the, the, the press release announcement from yesterday. Diamond announces the acquisition of Collectible Graded Grading Authority, CGA. So again, that's the parent company of Action Figure Authority. And uh, Diamond is actually part of, I don't know how to pronounce it, I think it's Jeppy family enterprises i'm going to show you all the different companies in a second under that brand umbrella but uh, they are uh, purchasing cga we don't know the amount but uh, or the price i mean but you know obviously cga afa they're based down in atlanta norcross to be more specific and uh, th that that branch is going to stay open uh, but they you know obviously cga is most known for action figures and for video games but they do die cast they do dolls all kinds of things like that and uh, so this is an, another kind of avenue for Diamond because they don't really have anything under their umbrella that is, is related to grading. And so let's take a look first before we start digging into the implications moving forward. Let's take a look at the brands that are underneath the uh, Jeppy or I think it's Jeppy Family Enterprises umbrella. So here are some of their, uh, their, their different uh, uh companies as it relates to collectibles. First, under gra uh, comics, graphic novels, books, and magazines, they've got a number of different items here. Diamond Comic Distributors is kind of was kind of known as the largest comic distributor in the U.S. They typically handled all of uh, the comic distribution to local comic shops of all the different major publishers. But there's been some major news there that I'm also going to cover here in a second that I think spurred them to kind of diversify their portfolio uh, to, 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 be, to go beyond just comic distributing. And obviously there's, there's, there's different magazines and things like that. Uh, Previews Magazine, Baltimore Magazine, Game Train Magazine. Under Toys and Games, they also have different uh, companies that are already under the same umbrella. Gentle Giant is probably the one you most recognize, you Star Wars fans. 
Gentle Giant obviously made the vintage style 12 inch figures on the vintage style Kenner card backs. Uh, so that's, that's also part of that brand. Uh, under multimedia, there's Previews World, which is uh, basically serves as a preview website for uh, a lot of the different comics that are coming out. And uh, there's Game Trade Media, you know, a number of different things. They also own two auction houses. I, I think that this acquisition of AFA has the potential to have a negative connotation with a lot of collectors because they also do own the auction houses. And I'll also dig into that in a second. But uh, Hakes is probably the most well-known uh, for you guys that collect Star Wars stuff, be it graded comics or very rare pre-production stuff or AFA graded Kenner stuff. Uh, that you know, Hakes has auctions going right now for uh, some amazing Star Wars items. So that is also under the same umbrella. So not only are they also auctioning, but they're also now grading Star Wars items. So there's potential for conflict there that I'll talk more about. And so again, for under grading, graded items, uh, they have E. Gerber, which does archival envelopes. I don't know much about them, but you know the CGA brand has all of these different subgroups that we've already known and talked about. VGA obviously grades uh, uh, video games. Uh, AFA just, or CGA just announced that they're moving into graded VHS tapes. We have AFA, obviously. Collectible Doll Authority, and then Diecast Authority for diecast items. So, and then they also have a number of different websites that they operate. Free Comic Book Day, which is a big one for you comic collectors. The Halloween Comic Fest that comes out every year. Uh, comic Shop Locator, Kids Comics, and then Bookshelf. So all, all of these uh, websites and brands are now under the same umbrella. And, and I think that moving into the graded uh, collectibles industry was a natural fit for uh, Jeppy Family Enterprises and Diamond Comics distributors because they did lose a major source of their comics distribution. It came out here recently that both Marvel and DC Comics, the two largest publishers of comic books, are no longer going to be using Diamond for their comic book distribution. And so uh, it's, it's a it was a pretty major announcement that came out on April 9th. So, uh, you know, this is kind of, I think, a, a, a repercussion of Marvel and DC both moving away from Diamond to uh, handle their comic book distribution to local comic shops in a different manner. And Marvel announced that they're going to be using Penguin Random House Publisher Services for their comics distribution. And then along with that, uh, DC, uh, DC Comics, they announced that they're no longer going to be using Diamond for their publishing and that came out on June 7th so a little bit after maybe two months after the Marvel announcement so those are two huge brands that Diamond is no longer handling the comic book distribution for and you know Jeppy came out with this announcement saying hey you know everything's fine we're gonna be just fine and they, they had hoped to reach an agreement with DC but again every change also presents great opportunity Rest assured, Diamond is a strong company, and our, and our success does not depend on the actions of one business partner. Well, in this case, it's two business partners, right? Marvel and DC both left Diamond. And so I think that a lot of, that, a lot of the uh, decision to acquire CGA uh, relates to the fact that, okay, we needed to diversify our revenue streams. We, you know, we, they had a, a pretty significant revenue stream that went away after DC and Marvel uh, we're no longer using them for their comic book distributions. And we already saw here recently, and I talked about this in another video, on July 1st, it came out that Blackstone, which is a major Wall Street kind of investment fund, were acquiring certified uh, collectibles groups, C CCG, which is the parent company of CGC, the comic book grading company, uh, the, basically the largest comic book grading company in the world. So Blackstone, that, you know, that to me is more of a straight acquisition, Wall Street play, a private equity firm wanting to get into that business. But I think this, this acquisition by Diamond is, is a different kind of animal. This is really, uh, in my opinion, a more of a horizontal, what's called horizontal uh, acquisition to kind of broaden their scope from everything from the publishing and, and distribution channels that they handle right now and, and sending stuff out to uh, different uh, providers like local comic shops and toy shops, things like that. Now they're also going to be handling grading of, of those items. Well, how, do, how does that, the fact that they also handle the auctioning of these other rare items that have already been graded by AFA? I think that the collectibles, uh, the collecting community has already come out on Facebook 
and said, ah, you know, there's a little bit of risk here that uh, there's a lot of, you know, brands that are all underneath the same umbrella. And Hake specifically is an auction house. Are they going to start pushing AFA graded or VGA graded items more heavily instead of other grading services because AFA is now part of the same company? Uh, there is potential for, you know, conflict of interest, so to speak. And we've already seen it happen. And uh, an example of that is WADA, which is a large video gr game grading company that we've talked about. They are owned and are affiliated with Golden. And uh, a YouTuber came out recently and said, hey, I'm not sure if, uh, you know, the Heritage Auctions house, which is affiliated with WADA Games, I'm not sure if they really should be in bed together. And he was basically accusing Heritage of inflating the prices for WADA graded video games. And so I think that's the concern for, for AFA is, is their brand, now that they're no longer independent and considered an independent grading company, now that they're also affiliated with uh, with Hakes and some of those auction houses that are underneath the Diamond Comics distributors and Jeppy Enterprises umbrella, is it going to create a conflict of interest? And I think that that's the question that collectors have right now is can we trust Hakes auctions for AFA graded items? And I, I'm certainly not accusing anybody of anything, but that's the concern because it's already being out there of being, you know, Heritage being accused of inflating prices through shill bidding for water graded games. And so uh, so that's going to be the question. It's it's a natural fit for Diamond, though, to, to get into this industry because they already handle the distribution for toys, some toys like General Giant and others. Uh, is now, now the fact that AFA is underneath that same umbrella, can AFA receive items straight from the distributor, grade those items, and then sell those on the Heritage, or excuse me, on the Hakes auction site? or directly uh, through other avenues, through the, the distribution channels that are already in place with Diamond. Who knows if that's the, the route they take, but it seems like a natural progression that as these items become straight out of the factory, uh, Diamond can send those over to AFA or VGA or, or wherever, have them get graded directly from the factory, factory fresh graded, and offer that service to customers. It seems like a natural fit to me and I bet we'll see that moving forward, whether it's video games or comics, you know, wh whether AFA or the CGA, you know, the umbrella goes into graded comics. That's another question. Do they want to compete in that space? There's already a lot of partner, a lot of companies that compete in that space, be it CGC, CBCS, PGX. You know, there's already a lot of, of brands that, that grade comics. But given that Diamond does still handle a lot of uh, comic distribution, does AFA or CGA want to get into graded comics as well uh, since they already have that avenue or that, that partnership in place for comics? Who knows the answer to that? But um, so that's, th those are some of the implications. Now, another major thing to think about is who are the other action figure graders? Uh, you've got UKG, who's in the UK, and you have CAS, Collector Archive Services, here in the US. To my knowledge, both of those are still independently owned. Uh, are those companies going to get snapped up? Uh, if, I am, if I'm CAS or UKG, I think that the number one thing that I would do in terms of marketing is market myself as independent. We are the only U.S. and U.K.-based independent grading companies. We're, no long, we're not part of a big conglomerate like AFA is, so you can trust us to be independent in our analysis and in our labeling and grading of, of different graded collectibles. That's what I would do if I were CAS and UKG. Um, but I would imagine that those two brands are probably going to receive suitors to be acquired by other large conglomerates or by Wall Street-backed funds that want to get into this business. It just seems like the consolidation is happening at a really rapid pace right now. And we, we saw that CGC got bought for $500 million. We don't know what C, uh, C, uh, CGA got bought for, but we can imagine it's probably a big number. So I would imagine CAS and UKG will receive some offers to be acquired. But uh, the other thing I'll say is this, is that AFA now has a lot of money to play with. They have a big backer in, uh, in uh, Jeppy Enterprises. They have a lot of money. Uh, obviously, they have a lot of different tendrils uh, within the collectibles industry that, that produces a lot of income. And AFA can use that money from their parent company 
to expand even more rapidly than they already planned. I, I put out a video here recently that talked about their expansion update. Well, now that they're part of the Jeppy Family Enterprises umbrella, are they going to expand even more rapidly? Are they going to open more offices? Are their turnaround times going to improve even more? So if I'm Collector Archive Services or UKG, I think the pressure is on them a little bit to improve their turnaround times to better compete with AFA, especially now that AFA has a lot of money backing them and they can easily expand services, different segments that they want to go into like they did with VHS tapes. Are they going to go into comics? Who knows? But uh, I think the potential is there for CAS and UKG to be kind of dusted by AFA if they don't figure out ways to expand their services and to improve their turnaround times to better compete with this big conglomerate that they're now faced with competing against instead of an independent AFA. So those are just some random thoughts that I had as I was looking at this news and I just thought it was kind of important to talk about it because um, the consolidation within the collectibles world is happening at a really rapid pace and I do not expect this to be the last major announcement that we see this year. I bet we'll see some either auction houses or other grading companies, be it action figures or other segments, be bought out by large conglomerates or by Wall Street backed investment funds. If you like this kind of video and you're new, welcome and thank you for watching and I hope you'll consider subscribing. To my existing subscribers as well as my Patreon supporters, as always, thank you for the support. I'll be back soon with some more market updates and don't forget about the live stream we have tomorrow at 1 p.m. on my channel with Jules Burt of Jules Burt's collecting, collecting, Collections and Unboxings. Thanks again for watching and I'll be back soon.